So as you can see behind me, there are massive rigs in this RV park, and we are probably, as usual, one of the smallest. It's wet over here. Oh, is it? Yeah. We're Levi and Leah, a Canadian couple living out of our Toyota Prius to complete a road trip of a lifetime. We left our apartment in the city to spend the next year circumnavigating North America. So after over six months on the road, I feel like Leah and I are just starting to understand the pros and cons. So today we're gonna show you why having a smaller rig can actually lead to bigger and better experiences. So welcome to one of our favorite camp spots we've had in Mexico so far. This is in Valladolid. And that's one of the great things about living out of the Prius is that we can like fit into these really funky spots that, I mean, there are bigger trailers here, but it's pretty primo. So as you can see behind me, there are massive rigs in this RV park. And we are probably, as usual, one of the smallest. So as you can see, this is sort of like a bar attached to the pool area, which is right beside where we are camping. We're also backing onto a dry cenote, which is super beautiful and makes it feel like we're kind of in the middle of the jungle, even though the center of town is a 10 minute walk over there. A lot of the times you can't actually bring a tent to places like this, but we get away with it because we're like, not a tent, not an RV. So that usually means that we save money as well. So it might not be like a four star resort, but like the fact that you can order a drink to the side of the pool, you have a pool. Yeah, it's basically a swim up bar, right? <laughs> but you just sleep in your car that's 10 feet that way. <laughs> I've also been fulfilling a childhood fantasy of mine to learn how to do a backflip into a pool and I've been getting Leah to film me over the last couple of days. L let's see if I can do it on camera and not hurt myself. Right now? <laughs> you make me so stressed when you do this. Take off, you take off sunglasses? Okay, good. <laughs> I feel like that was my worst one yet. One of the nice things about being in a small rig as well is that you can get into places that other vehicles just can't, like when we were at Manu Chan. So this is a family-run cenote, and because our car is so small, we literally drove right through the path. And I'm like, yeah, park right here. Yeah. You can't do that in an RV or a van. <laughs> this is our first cenote experience. I'm almost a little nervous. I don't know if I'm really kind of almost ready for this. So this cenote is actually owned by a person and they just put it up on Overlander as a place where you can park and stay the night and that's why we're here. But it's kind of crazy that like a person technically like owns this? Yeah, like a family owns this property <laughs> and this is this is theirs. Today is a driving day. We are going to be going from Valladolid to Bacalar where we're going to be staying for four or five days or something like that. But first, we need water. One of the great things of being in a car instead of a bigger rig is we could literally park in this tiny space and refill our water. As you can see, if you were in like a bigger rig, you got this roof behind not super wide, and you gotta get in around this car, but if you're in a Prius, no problem. So this is a water purification station. You can find them pretty well all over Mexico. Um, and basically you insert 10 pesos and you fill whatever jug you have. Now being able to fit into a tight parking spot is a good party trick, but it has a ton of implications about where you can go. We've spent a lot of time in cities on this trip and that's only possible because our rig is so small. If you see this sign, that means tope, and that means slow down. I feel like you hear a lot of horror stories of driving in Mexico. Really, you just have to be always aware, right? <laughs> of road conditions, of topes especially, because we have been caught out a few times, but in those instances, I am always so thankful that we are in the Prius yeah. and that we have a lift in the Prius. Yeah. Because without the lift, 
I don't know if she would still be alive now. <laughs> So these are yet yeah. another version of topes, which are just random bumps that you can't yeah. avoid. Uh -huh. So as we keep going, it'll get worse and worse. <laughs> and we're not going very fast right now. Oh, and then you get uh, all the way to the end. And a big tope. And get a big tope. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were in a big van right now? Like, Honestly, the whole thing would be Sometimes the car gets rattled so badly by topes that our dash cam gets disconnected from the port that it's plugged into. It starts beeping at us like, why? Why you do this to me? <laughs> All right, so we just pulled in for gas. And this is obviously one thing that is going to be much better being in a car camper than in a van because it is very, very cheap to drive around in this Prius. We just filled <laughs> up for 842 pesos, which equates to about 45 American dollars, and that's extremely cheap for a rig that we're able to sleep in. We've heard of people driving down from Canada in these massive motorhomes, and their average cost is about a dollar per kilometer. Another way that we save a ton of money is when we pay for toll roads. Basically, the bigger your rig, the more you have to pay, and as a car, it's so much cheaper. You'll also notice this with a lot of other kinds of transportation, like if you have to put your car on a boat, for example. Having a smaller vehicle is hugely beneficial in these circumstances and will save you a ton of money. When we took the ferry from Baja over to Mazatlan, that was one of the most expensive things we did on this trip, and I can't imagine how much more bananas it would be with a bigger rig. Dude, wow. this rain just started up, and this is... Holy cow, this is, this is 100% windshield wipers right now. Yeah, I think that's the fastest that she goes. Oh my god. We've been in one other rainstorm while we've been in Mexico, but I think this might be the craziest one so far. What? <laughs> Leah's in her full driving stance. Oh, yeah. 10 and 2, baby. <laughs> All right, so it has been literally like five minutes and now it is blue sky. Yeah. Pretty much all over the place. Doesn't look like it's gonna rain anymore. No, and the road <laughs> is basically dry. <laughs> Another benefit of driving a small vehicle, especially in a country like Mexico, where there is a lot of sort of uncertain police presence, is that we pass as locals most of the time. We've been through a ton of tolls where people just wave us through, but we've heard from other people who are driving RVs that they always get stopped, they always get searched because there's like a big flashing sign that says, tourist, you're not from here. <laughs> yeah. But somehow just being in the car, we're able to pass through those things a lot more easily. Basically, whether you are in the United States, Canada, Mexico, or wherever in the world, driving a normal car just allows you to blend in a bit more naturally when you're driving around town. So one of the best parts about driving in Mexico is the roadside fruit stalls. Oh my gosh, yes, finally it's mango season. No. And frutas, venduras. Fruta. Melon? No, it's este mame. Okay, so. so for a hundred pesos, which is five American dollars, we got three mangoes, limes, a whole pineapple, and I, <laughs> it's like a big kiwi. <laughs> I have actually know. no idea what it is. We're gonna eat it and see. This is another thing that you don't always think about when you're planning a trip is the fact that you're on the road, but you also might want to pull over and stop. And being able to just pull the car over and go and check out a view or pick up some random fruit from a fruit stall is something that's way easier when you're in a smaller rig. A smaller rig. Smaller rig. Okay. So this is Bacalar. Um, you also have like the best deck? <laughs> I want to say a deck is really important, <laughs> but when you have a big deck, it's very important. <laughs> the funny part about this amazing spot that we just pulled up at is um, it's not where we planned to go and no. it's not even a campground. No. <laughs> Next door is a campground and they're full. We literally just walked in being like, 
hey, do you have space for camping? <laughs> this very nice man's like, yeah, okay. Right there. Go ahead. <laughs> this whole area is like a giant lagoon, and all these waterfront properties are, I mean, look, pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful. I mean, this is clearly like a place that has a fair bit of money. And we just happen to be camping over here <laughs> in a Prius. <laughs> Outdoor shower? <laughs> wow, we have like an actual washroom. There are toilet seats. <laughs> oh, on bowls <laughs> and toilet paper. Now here's the reality. We are sort of in a construction zone by the looks of it. I mean, we are not, you know, uh, beautifully accommodated. So, uh, you know, we're not... What's a few cinder blocks for a view like that? <laughs> So we went out for a quick walk to pick up some groceries and we ended up getting margaritas and a beer because uh, we have to. it's pouring rain right now. <laughs> this is our third thunder shower of the day. Look at how much rain is coming down right now. This is crazy. This is really fun, honestly. The only problem is that all of the windows are currently open on the car back at home, so... Thankfully we closed the back, which is the tent, but, um... We might have some cleanup to do. Maybe a pit day. Alright, so... Let's take a look. It's... Pretty wet, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's wet over here. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's actually not bad on mine. Look at that. There's like pooling water on the top of the tent. I'm so glad that we closed it. Oh no, and like all of our <laughs> and our chairs. No. No. Just just pools of water. Oh my god. Well, I guess this is one argument in favor of van life. So it did in fact rain again last night yep. and all of our stuff is pretty wet that was left outside. Our bed is dry though, we rolled up the windows and the tent worked great, so we weren't wet, just all of our stuff. <laughs> now of course being outside and having all of your stuff outside is a downside of living in your car versus a van, but it is also a pro in some ways because being outside and having to eat here in a common area exposes us to way more people and we've had some amazing experiences and gained real friends because of this exposure that we have. Just yesterday we ended up playing Mario Kart with this French family. I was surprised at how A bad I was but also very competitive. <laughs> If you watched our Christmas episode, you saw that we developed a friendship with a bunch of people over Christmas time and ended up having dinner with them. We also ended up meeting this really nice couple that lives just outside of San Francisco. And then we stayed at their cabin. If you've ever done any kind of like hostel traveling, you understand that amazing community that can be built from traveling on the road and and sometimes it's hard to create that same sort of hostel experience when you're in an RV park or in a hotel but the Prius just gives you that extra little bit of exposure. Literally, you're exposed. <laughs> you are outside, always. To rain and people. Yeah. So we bought this fruit on the side of the road. It looks kind of like a kiwi, and we're gonna see what it is. What'd you guess on color? I think green. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm gonna say red, though, just to be different. Oh, there's a seed. You're right, wow. it's like red. <laughs> Look at the inside of this. This is crazy. Look at that seed. It smells kind of like a papaya. Look how it looks papaya ass. It tastes like a sweet potato. Yeah, it, it's like it a, tastes it's like, like a, a sweet, sweet potato. potato. And a papaya had a baby. 
<laughs> but it has the skin of a of, of a kiwi. Of a kiwi. If you know what this strange fruit is called, uh, leave a comment down below and whether or not you like it and if you do you like it? What do you do with it? Another perk of car camping is that this was so much easier to set up. We went a little overboard on the deck and everything else because Levi's dad is a cabinet maker. But between the lift, the bed, all of those things, I would say 5000 maximum Canadian dollars. So if you've been on the channel for a while, you've probably seen our tour video where we go through everything in detail here. But to make a long story short, we have removed the back seats from the car. Inside we have extra storage and we have a full size battery and a fridge. Also have this box and rack on the back to add extra storage. Now, obviously our uh, back rack here is still bent out of shape and uh, we're gonna need to come up with a solution for that but we haven't really figured anything out and for the moment it still kind of works even though it's all bent this is still a flat surface that we used to cook on and it seems pretty stable it's not like wobbling all over the place it's just you know it's a bit wonky <laughs> This took us about two months to set up and very little technical knowledge. Like, yes, my dad helped a lot and he was instrumental in making it look as good as it does. But I think most people with, you know, some basic tools could take a car and turn it into a camper in, I don't know, like two, three weeks if they really needed to get it done. Do you, do you agree, Leah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just, stood, you just, just stood there looking at me. You're like, you're like. <laughs> and I think what's nice is that you can get on the road so much faster. You mm -hmm. see so many people who buy vans or RVs and then they end up giving up halfway through because it's so expensive. There's so many skills that they don't have. When we thought about doing this trip in the first place, our plan was a van. We wanted to do the sprinter van experience, but between the cost of buying one up front and all the technical skills required to actually turn it into a home, it just wasn't realistic. We weren't gonna be able to hit the road in like two or three months. It was gonna be a minimum like six, seven months. And that time you spent renovating the van, could be on the road. Exactly. So hopefully this has convinced you to take whatever is in your driveway and turn it into a car camper and drive all over the country. <laughs> this is a video that changed your mind, right? Yes. It wasn't any other factor in your life, just this. Um, this isn't our typical kind of video. If you look through the rest of our catalog, you'll see what we get up to every single week. And if that looks like it's of interest to you, then subscribe. And we'll see you every single Saturday. Bye everyone. Thanks for watching. So as you may have guessed, the battery died again. So this is the Noco Boost Plus. It is just a regular car jumper battery thing. Yeah, so we're grounding onto the metal, we're connecting it to our battery, and uh, now we're gonna see if, uh, if this thing will work to start up the car.